Yo, what is going on everybody? Fred at Eastgate Unity here, back at you with another video. Today we have something very different. I am super excited. This is the Bigode M10 IV. It's an electric unicycle that's more of a portability and small type of wheel to just be a starter or just to have fun with. I mainly got it for my girlfriend to start riding unicycles and of course I will be riding it as well. Let's get right into it. Quality assurance, certificate of compliance, and owner's manual. By the way, shout out to Alien Rides for providing this wheel. Ooh, look how cute this little thing is. Smells brand new. These are pads, so those of you that aren't too familiar with unis, these are both pads. I'm going to put these to the side for right now. So again, this is the Bigode M10 IV. You have the spike pedals, you have a nice handle right here, and it's only about 28 pounds, so it's a very, very light unicycle. So that's another reason why I got it for my girlfriend, because she's only like 115 pounds. So this is going to be a very good starter wheel for her and it's gonna be fun for me to ride around as well. This goes up to about 25 miles per hour, and range, I've seen a 200 pound rider on YouTube get 30 to 34 miles of range. So sometimes it depends on how you ride, just like Eastgate, but it seems like a lot of people are getting about that 25 mile range with this. It's a 750 watt hour battery, which is huge for this size. The 11 inch wheel, this headlight right here, it pivots, and it's 5,000 lumens, it's crazy. The motor inside here is about 1,000 watts. Pricing is around 1,100 to $1,200. And I don't know if you can see it on camera, I'll show it a little bit later, but you can see all the electronics inside here, which is cool. So you can see all the electronics inside here as well. You have the 11 inch knobby tire, so you can go off-roading with this. This is a part of the kickstand. This up. This is the power button. And this is the charging port. If you are new to electric unicycles, don't throw these away because you can mount your wheel on here. I'm assuming this is the charger sticker. Thank you, Alien Rides. Again, shout out to Alien Rides. This is a one and a half amp charger, which is a doable size for this size wheel. If you want to get a five amp charger, which is obviously bigger, it will charge this wheel from zero to 100 in about an hour and a half, which is awesome. This is the rear tail light. So not only is it a tail light, but it's a blinker. So when you lean to one side, this side blinks, and you lean to this side, this side blinks. So to turn it on, because usually they go in travel mode, which means if it's in the box, it can start moving because it senses its tilt. I'm gonna hold this down. All right, and then it turns on. So you have the digital, digital display. And then I think I do it five times. One, two, three four, five. And then now I think I turn it back off by holding it down. All right, so now it's off. And now I think when I turn it back on by holding it down, I think it will be good to go. So I just turned it on. All right, now it's self-balancing. When you first get your electric unicycle, definitely hold on to these pads. You can just put the wheel right in there and it'll mount. So you don't have to just lean it up against the wall if you don't have space. Again, it's 28 pounds, super easy to hold. Try to show you the display. So once you turn it on, it self balances. See the display? How cool is that? Here's the rear lights, which is so cool. I think if you start going and you start tilting, it has blinkers as well. But we'll check that out later. So let me put on the pads, charge it up, and then we'll take it out for a ride. So while she's charging, I'm just gonna try to put the pads on, double-sided tape. Just be careful with this double-sided tape. Sometimes you remove the adhesive side altogether. Make sure you don't peel off both adhesive sides together. I did that almost on the top. So you can see up here, and now it's coming off smooth. And you see there's little rivets inside here and here, and that's kind of your guideline points. And then just kind of push it down with the adhesive. 
do its job. I did order a new kind of protectant parts for here. So if my girl drops it, all this kind of corners will be protected. So I'm waiting for that to come in. So you beginners that are afraid of dropping the wheel and damaging it, I'll put the link in the description. There's a couple different pads you can buy. So let's first talk about the 11 inch tubeless knobby tire. At first, I didn't think I would like this. I liked a street tire just like my RS19. So I was thinking that feeling this knobby tire while riding on regular pavement was gonna be super unsmooth, just like it was when I was a kid riding dirt bikes on the streets, but it was super smooth. Off-roading, this is where it really shines. Now is for the carve slash agility. This is the main reason why I got this it's wheel. It's just so much fun. It carves very easily, it turns on a dime. It's fun to practice riding backwards. It's actually helping me becoming a better rider because it is so responsive that I'm not used to a wheel like this and it's just improving my riding skills. And also since it's so light and small that if you actually lose control of it, you just catch it with your one foot and it won't crash like a normal unicycle will.
As for the brakes, these brakes are awesome. I never would have thought romping on brakes on a PV would be so much fun. As for the acceleration slash power. Now I wasn't expecting uh, all kinds of powerful PV here, but it actually still impressed me. Two, three. 84% battery. We're on the bottom of a huge hill. And we're gonna see how this takes it up the hill. Ooh, taking it no problem. Nine miles per hour up the hill. That ate that hill. That's crazy. As for riding seated with this wheel, now it's obviously a super small wheel, so if you're a really big guy, it might not be comfortable for you. However, I have seen other riders that got this wheel that are around that 5'8 to 6 foot mark, and they're still riding it while seated. For me, I'm only 5'5, 150 pounds, so it was actually kind of a cool experience for me. I'm not that great at riding seated, so from what you're watching, this is me practicing as well. But what's funny about this wheel is that normally with the unicycle, you buy a seat to sit on. With this, it actually has a good platform for you to place your butt, and it's not uncomfortable. Is it the most comfortable seat? Of course not. But you really don't need an actual padded seat because it has a nice big platform for you to sit on. And for you commuters that are actually doing somewhat of a long commute, if your feet and legs are getting fatigued, go ahead and sit down. As for the lights, now this is actually kind of cool. This reminds me of an old school Tetris game. So if you start accelerating forward, the yellow goes into the red lights as if it's going forward. And if you lean to the left, as if you're taking a left-hand turn, it'll have a signal going left. Same thing going to the right. If you go right, it'll start signaling to the right side. So not only does that look cool, but it's good for group rides. So somebody knows which direction you're going, or if you start braking, the big red block just illuminates a brighter red, just like a regular car brake light. As for the front light, it's got this blue LED look that's kind of the daytime running light. And then you can use the regular headlight, which is 5,000 lumens. And then if you click the power button one more time, the headlight will have a strobing slash flickering effect. So if you're riding in an area that you need to be seen, this is definitely a good option. As for top speed, I hit 22 miles per hour with this small wheel and I don't really recommend going too much faster. From what I'm reading online, it can do up to 25 miles per hour and without any load, it does 34 miles per hour. As for range, I got 27 miles of range with 5% battery left on this wheel. Now a couple things, I'm 150 pounds, I was cruising from 15 to 18 miles per hour but I was doing a lot of off-roading, which some of you may know, that is the number one way to kill range. So I definitely think if I didn't do any off-roading, I probably would have got another five or six miles of range from this little beast. As for portability, I mean, as you guys can probably imagine, it's so small, the handle's super convenient, it's so easy just to throw into your car, or even if you're going shopping or something like that, you can just throw it in your carriage, throw it in the trunk, whatever. It's so easy to carry around. Constructive criticism. Now, when you wanna charge up, 
trying to get your finger inside this tiny little hole that's metal is a pain in the butt. Now, once you get the charging cover lifted up, pushing in the power cable is actually not that easy. I have plenty of the same type of charge ports on a few boards and they just kind of stick right in. This one isn't that simple. Now, once you get it in there, if you screw it tight, it's hard to get your fingers in there. So not only is it hard to get your fingers in there, but that's wrapped around a metal thin case and it's just not comfortable at all. It actually kind of hurts your fingers a little bit. So if you do decide to tighten it, trying to get your fingers in there to loosen up, it just sucks times two. It's as simple as that. Also, these stock pads, they just suck. Not only do they just not stick, they're actually not too comfy. I actually have a bruise on the side of my leg from it. So here's my Pagode RS19. So when I go to lift it up any types of stairs, there's a kill switch where my hand is. Once I push it, it does this. What that does, it disables the wheel from spinning. Most unicycles also have a trolley handle. As for the M10 IV, it doesn't have a kill switch where the handle is. So when I lift it up, the wheel is gonna spin. The only way to get around this is to just shut off the wheel itself. The M10 IV also doesn't have a trolley handle. So you gotta bend down and kind of roll it for those small areas you don't wanna lift it up. Now I've seen a couple aftermarket hand trolleys, but I just think it looks a little silly. Now, since the wheel is so small and maneuverable, having your foot planted is pretty important. A lot of people love these metal spiked pedals. I don't. I like the classic grip tape pedals, so I wish the M10 IV had these instead. Now this part isn't really a criticism per se, but if you're not a skilled rider, you're not gonna like this because every time you hit some kind of bump in the road or off-roading, you're gonna feel that momentum shifting because it's such a small and lightweight wheel. So once you hit those imperfections, you gotta know how to handle the wheel. This is an app that most electric unicycles utilize. Now with this app, you could do a lot of cool different things such as speed, miles, temperature, but I'm bringing it up in the constructive criticism section because I personally think riding in soft mode with this wheel is a must. I just think riding in hard mode will be too squirrely. Final thoughts. So I got this wheel mainly to teach my girlfriend how to ride, and I also wanted to ride it myself because it's a lot of fun. And that's exactly what it is. It's so much fun. However, if you have never ridden an electric unicycle, I don't suggest this as a first wheel. I say that because it's just simply not easy to learn on. I'm trying to teach my girlfriend how to ride it. It's been about three days. She's getting the hang of it, but I can just tell if she had something like an in-motion V5 or a V8, it would be a little bit easier on her. However, she is super small. She's only five foot, 115 pounds. So I figured that this is a good way to go because anytime she drops it, it would be much easier to just control it. And if you drop it, it's not that big of a deal since it's so small. I just know she would go in full panic mode if she dropped a 40, 50 pound wheel. But if you are already riding electric unicycles and you love the sport as much as me, and you just wanna branch out to different types of fun, this is definitely the way to go. It's super fun in the trails. It's so easy to carry around in your car or just to throw it in the shopping cart when you're shopping at ShopRite, or you just wanna try something different like this super small wheel that has awesome agility and it's just so much fun to ride. Also, if you already have one or you plan on buying one, and you guys want the protection package that I have that's surrounding the headlight and the 3D print on the top, I'll leave the link in the description. Thank you for watching, guys. Please comment, like, share, subscribe. Have a good one, guys.